Brian and I have been so woe as us. We've been so sad. I know, it's been so cold. We've actually had a blizzard. You never have a blizzard on the eastern shore of Maryland, but we've actually had one. That's right, foot of snow just, what, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So we- Froze up the water. Yeah, completely frozen. Which so the boat's sitting out on the dock with the cover on and we are depressed. So we thought we would revisit good times from the summer and talk about some of our favorite lures. So we've put together our top five go-to list. And we came up with this because Brian asked me the other night, he said, honey, if you only had five lures to fish with for the rest of your life, what would they be? So here we go, our top five list. Number one, I didn't even have to think about it. We both said, Spectric. Here it is. This little beauty is outstanding. Honey, tell them why the spec rig rocks. The spec rig or the tandem rig is uh, real effective around here because it mimics uh, a main forage food for the fish that are in our bay. So when you throw this out, it looks like a little glass minnow. And uh, when you retrieve it back, the fish that tend to be in our bay, they just simply like it. In addition to that, and we'll get into a little bit more of it later, this, the tandem setup is, is effective. So this is a great lure. If you only had to pick one lure to fish in the bay to catch quantities of fish, you pick the speck rig. Because you can catch anything on it. I've caught big blues all the way down to... Tall, tall. Yeah, all the way down to little sea bass. I mean, you know, yeah. you can, and they're very easy to use. So even if you're taking kids fishing, these are awesome. Yep. They come in a variety of weights and colors. We tend to go with a quarter ounce for our area, but you can get eight ounce, a variety. Yeah, and get the quarter. Yeah, we usually like a mix of colors, usually like a chartreuse in white, chartreuse in pink. Those seem to work the best. So without a doubt, you can catch anything on a spec rig. Yep. Hey, he was off the uh, he was off that piling. Yeah. Get him, Fong. Fish on, Fish on my man. Look, he's double. Little guys. Yeah, little guys. We got him. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Get it, girl. Hey. Hey, Kim. Hey, hey. Hey, 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 Number two. Some variation of soft plastic, my personal favorite is the Roy Rig, you know. It's a, it's a fabulous lure, our Big Bird Cropper who makes those. But any will do. We've even gone to the uh, Nuclear Chicken, is mm -hmm. that what this color is? My personal new fave. It's kind of got the pink and green with some nice fleck. But these, these paddle tails, man, Fish can't resist them. They're wonderful. We usually like something with a little bit of fleck in it, um, but the plain colors work great too. Um, they're just a fabulous lure. Uh, rockfish really love them. Uh, bluefish, they mm -hmm. love them too. They can bite off the back of the tail. Yeah. So that is, if you're going for bluefish, that is something to consider because once that tail's off, some people say you can still use them, but we don't. If this tail gets bit off, change it, put a new one on, yeah. it's worth the money. Mm -hmm. They make tougher ones, like Z-Man makes a tougher one. Some others have tried to come out with tougher ones as well. Uh, anything like Gulp, of course, will work on these as well. Our weights we almost always go with are between a half ounce and one ounce. You'll go into a heavier weight if you get into some deeper water. Generally speaking around here, everything we throw is around a half ounce to an ounce. What do you got? What do you got? <laughs> Flick it in the boat, that's a key, it might be a keeper. So number three, the fish finder setup. You can use the fish finder setup, again, to catch a big variety of fish. I use it mainly to catch flounder. I love catching flounder with a fish finder setup. Brian will explain it in a moment. But this was actually the first rig that I learned about when we moved to Ocean City. We had been freshwater fishermen and I had no idea how to catch flounder. So we talked to a local guy who catches flounder all the time and a lot of times he wins the local, you know, best tournaments. 
and this is his one setup. So Brian, I'll show you how it works. It's awesome. So this is just, what we call it a fish finder setup. It's just kind of like a Carolina rig. Basically, you use a long piece of mono or fluoro with a hook snelled at the end, and you can put like a gulp. A lot of people put live bunker, peanut bunker, uh, or uh, mud minnows, mummy chugs, whatever. They'll put them on these. Uh, anything basically on this end is the attractant, you know, to get the fish to bite. Then a long leader, this allows it to flow more freely in the water. And then here, like this setup here, the sliding weight here, um, you can see there, you can put different weights on this as well. It's nice because it's so interchangeable. And then the idea behind this with it slipping on the main line here is that if you're, you're uh, drifting or you feel a hit and you wanna give the fish time to eat a large presentation, then you can open your bale and just let this weight sit at the bottom and then let the main line pull out and let the fish feel no resistance, little resistance, so they can eat it. So that's the idea behind the fish finder. You can also use an inlet, inline like egg sinker along with it. This other little contraption lets you change weights, works pretty good. This may be a little more aerodynamic. You might get away with a little less weight on this, maybe a little less snag, but uh, we don't use them too much because we like the convenience of snapping out and changing weights. So number four is the bucktail. This, we like the Spro bucktails. These are fabulous. They're real deer tail. And then we put on, you know, anything soft plastic. Um, mm -hmm. Again, we usually like these paddle tails, but you can do the curly tail grubs. Mm -hmm. um, this one here has become my new go-to lure as well. When the Roy or the soft plastics doesn't work, this is usually the next lure I stick on. The Spro Bucktails are wonderful, and we really got into these. Brian got hooked on John Skinner's videos, and he's an excellent fisherman up north uh, in New York near like Montauk, the area. Um, Long but Island. Yeah, Fishing the Bucktail. If you haven't read this book, I recommend it. It'll teach you everything you know about how to fish these bucktails. Very versatile lure. Yeah, and these might change on us as we get a little more proficient. The bucktail we didn't use at all the first year and then started mm -hmm. using it more and more and we find we keep going back to this and using it you know a lot uh, you can also of course take a piece of fish or any other bait and put it as your trailer i think a trailer is important in most cases uh so you want to use that but you know the bucktail is nice because uh it does a lot of things you know and as you get better with it you know as we get better with it we'll use it for more things but very versatile lure it's kind of an essential one i think yeah you can use a lot of different presentations you yeah. can present it so many different ways targeting yeah. so many different species yeah, a lot of fish bite it exactly mm -hmm. and it comes in a nice variety of weight so we fish a lot of times under the route 50 bridge where based on where you are at in the Route 50 bridge, you could go from a three ounce spro all the way down to like a three quarter ounce. Mm -hmm. And it's really nice. You know, they've got the little, you just change them out, you know, with your uh, swivel and, um, and put them on and go. So yeah. nice variety. Yep. Yep. Okay, turn them. There we go. Got it. Good job. Number five. Tell them number about five, this one, honey. Number five is is arguably maybe you know anything that involves this um, high low type of setup is really useful. Uh, mm -hmm. This I have it set up right now with a four O hook on this end with a little loop, and then on this end the bottom we just do a, a quick loop surgeon's knot, and uh, you can put anything on the bottom. So you could easily put an, a weight on it. And then like say you put a sand flea on this end or a grub and have it go down and you're just pulling it along uh, and you can shake it, whatever. 
Also, in, with this setup too, you can use, of course, this to put bait or a lure on of any type and have two presentations going to the fish to offer them. So this, you can change depth real easy just by switching it out. Uh, and it gives you a lot of variety. So this uh, acts in an essence uh, similar to a tandem rig, not quite, but a uh, high-low type of setup. Or if you just have a weight down here, just a one-hook setup. Very versatile. We use it for tog fishing. You can use it for sheep's head, black drum, whatever. Uh, re really versatile. Uh, but that, that is a great setup. We use it all the time. And if you haven't tried tog fishing, you really should. That has become one of my favorite species to target. I call it ninja fishing because those little guys, yeah. man, they steal your bait within a second. So yeah. you have to be ready to set the lure, and it's very fun. Brian's got some clips we'll, we'll show you. Yeah. Now, if uh, I'm not showing the details of any of this on this video because it, it, you know, we don't want to make it too long-winded, but if you guys want to see exactly how... Uh, we tie these and how we set them up and some more explanation. I'll be happy to do it, but you have to comment for me to do it. Is your net in here? No. Nope. Oh, it's a little. Good fish. Oh, you got him? Yeah, come on. Right up. They just you got him? Yep, there he goes. He's on your top one. Yeah, he's on the bug. <laughs> hey, they're getting the right size, man. They're get, you're going the right way with these. <laughs> okay, so honorable mention. When you honorable do a list, you got to have an honorable mention. Yep. And Brian, what's yours? Hard baits are honorable mention here in the Bay. The gotcha plugs, uh, the Yuzuri minnows. These uh, can be trolled. They can be cast. These also work very well in current as well. We have a lot of current here in the Bay uh, where we fish primarily around the 50 bridge in the inlet. So these lures... Uh, you can use them, the current to the benefit of the lure, and you can also hold them in location. So this is a great lure. This has caught a lot of fish, flounders, redfish, tall, tall or, um, stripers, bluefish, all that. They all, bite, most of them will bite if it's around. The gotcha plug, uh, everyone will tell you fishes around here, especially around the 50 bridge. This is a standard lure around here. We'll show you some clips on it too. Uh, great lure. Hard baits are great too. Uh, the treble hooks are a little bit iffy. When they have a lot of treble hooks, you can get into quite a mess with these fish, especially like bluefish, you really turn and twist a lot. So you can change these out very easily like this one has and just have one big hook at the end. So uh, I would recommend that too. But honorable mention is the hard bait. Oh, fish on. Fish on. Fish out, son. Goodness, he's the biggest one yet. Good God, son. Son. That's a probably about a 24 incher. Oh my God. Look at that. Oh my God. So there it is, our top five list with an honorable mention. Hopefully, we're going to be able to get out there and fish soon. If not, Brian and I, whew, we're going to need. Need some help. We got to go south. We got to yeah. go south. Yeah. All right, guys. Happy fishing. Yep. See you later. See you.